Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Archaeology News. Today, we focus our attention on the controversies surrounding Dr. Zahi Hawass, one of the most famous contemporary Egyptologists in the world. Get ready to unravel the controversial attributes that have thrust him into the spotlight. Brace yourself for a journey filled with intrigue as we dive deep into his rise to power, accusations of corruption, and the whispers surrounding his notoriety. Before we move on, remember to hit that subscribe and like button to join us on every other adventure through the sands of time. In the 1980s, a young and ambitious Zahi Hawass, armed with a PhD in archaeology from the University of Pennsylvania, became the chief antiquities inspector at the Giza Plateau, home to the majestic pyramids. He captured the world's imagination and later took on a greater role as leader of the Supreme Council of Antiquities in 2002. As a powerful figure, Dr. Howis called for the return of Egypt's iconic treasures, like the Rosetta Stone and the Nefertiti bust, from foreign nations. He also facilitated international museums' access to Egyptian artifacts through captivating exhibitions, which not only celebrated Egypt's heritage, but also benefited the government financially. Dr. Howis went beyond exhibitions and halls, recognizing the threats to Egypt's ancient legacy. He bravely halted excavations in vulnerable regions where water and development pose risks to the nation's cultural heritage. As a guardian of antiquity, he fought valiantly to protect Egypt's treasures from the forces of time and modernity. However, putting aside Dr. Howis's shiny achievements, a controversial narrative begins to unfold. Driven by an insatiable hunger for fame and perhaps an unfortunate disregard for scientific rigor, he embarked on a peculiar journey through the realm of reality television. Cast as the charismatic protagonist in the enthralling series Chasing Mummies, which aired in 2010 on the History Channel, Dr. Howis faced harsh criticism for his perceived lack of reverence towards these ancient artifacts, blurring the boundaries between showmanship and scholarly pursuit. In the realm of academia, concerns arose within Egypt regarding the unclear fate of the substantial wealth accumulated by Dr. Howis through book tours, lectures, and television appearances. The utilization of these financial gains remained uncertain, leading Egyptians to desire transparency and accountability, casting a shadow over the situation. Witnesses, who remain anonymous yet credible, stepped forward to shed light on Dr. Howis's actions. Startling accounts emerged, recounting an incident witnessed firsthand by one fellow archaeologist during the official opening of the legendary Valley of the King's Tomb, KV-63. Driven by what some consider disdain for unremarkable artifacts, this witness claims to have seen Dr. Howis himself shatter an important ostracon, dismissing it as uninteresting. Another credible source, a member of the KV-63 excavation team, corroborated these accounts, providing a damning testament to Dr. Howis's alleged vandalism. More so, critics, ever watchful and discerning, observed a disconcerting pattern in Dr. Howis's conduct. Accused of unbridled self-aggrandizement, he stood accused of overshadowing the contributions of his fellow antiquities workers. Charges were levied, asserting that Dr. Howis prioritized the allure of public relations over the pursuit of scientific inquiry. Furthermore, his scientific findings, regrettably, found themselves scarce within the realm of peer-reviewed journals, prompting concerns about the authenticity and integrity of his work. Peers within the field, a majority of them, dismissed him as 90% showman and a mere 10% archaeologist. Intriguingly, Dr. Howis's sense of self-worth seemed to transcend the realms of modesty. In his own words, he proclaimed, When I talk, people listen to me. When others talk, people sleep. Confident in his undeniable influence, he reveled in the impact he had made throughout his career. He even recounted an anecdote that exemplified his exceptional aura, recounting a chance encounter in England where he stepped into an elevator, causing a lady to faint in disbelief. But the tale of Dr. Zahi Hawass's controversial journey does not end there, dear viewers. This pivotal moment brought significant changes to his career trajectory. Dr. Zahi Hawass's position as Minister of Antiquities under former Egyptian President Hosni Mubarak's government became entangled in politics. Criticism against him grew louder within Egypt and globally. In 2011, amidst monumental protests in Egypt, 
Prime Minister Assam Sharaf removed Dr. Hawass from his ministerial role, which held immense power and responsibility. With authority over foreign excavations and a staff of over 30,000, this position carried significant prestige in a country reliant on its 5,000-year heritage. Dr. Hawass's dismissal prompted his lamentation, All the devils united against me, reflecting the challenges he faced. His resignation on March 3, 2011 and subsequent reappointment on March 30, 2011 were significant events during Mubarak's resignation. These actions sparked anger among factions opposing the return of figures associated with the old regime. The 2011 Egyptian protests intensified scrutiny on Dr. Hawass, with demonstrators demanding his resignation due to his ties to the Mubarak family and his growing public image. He became a focal point of anger among the protesters who had played a pivotal role in toppling President Hosni Mubarak in February. Accusations of corruption, flawed scientific practices, and uncomfortably close ties to the deposed president and his family were vehemently denied by Dr. Hawass. Additionally, many young archaeologists demanded better employment opportunities and improved compensation, expressing disappointment in Dr. Hawass's perceived failure to meet their expectations. Nora Shalabi, a passionate young Egyptian archaeologist who played an active role in the revolution, bluntly referred to him as the Mubarak of Antiquities. On a side note, it should be noted that throughout his career, Dr. Hawass possessed a penchant for embellishment, often referring to his own discoveries as epic and record-breaking. These claims, some argue, were a dubious attempt to elevate his image and achievements, perhaps overshadowing the remarkable contributions of other archaeologists who made equally significant discoveries within the realm of Egyptology. But the shadow of Dr. Howis's actions extended beyond the realm of grandiose claims. His relationship with fellow archaeologists were marred by accusations of domineering behavior. Some alleged that he forbade other archaeologists from announcing their own findings, while others accused him of shamelessly courting the media for personal gain. In his eyes, certain individuals were deemed too amateurish to gain access to archaeological sites, leading to their exclusion. Yet, amidst these allegations, a few brave voices emerged, acknowledging that some of Dr. Howes's endeavors were long overdue for the field. Nevertheless, the majority of his critics were left ignored or dismissed as Dr. Howes maintained the belief that these critics were not deemed worthy of a response. But the controversial tale takes an unexpected turn as we venture into the realm of fashion. Dr. Howes, with his unmistakable style, decided to lend his name to a line of men's apparel, described as rugged khakis, denim shirts, and carefully worn leather jackets. These garments, reminiscent of Egypt's golden age of discovery in the early 20th century, made their debut at London's renowned Harrods department store in April of 2011. Critics raised their voices, asserting that this endeavor commercialized Egyptian history, diluting its significance. Furthermore, rumors swirled that models posing for the clothing line had disrespected priceless ancient artifacts during a photo shoot. Dr. Howis and the clothing manufacturers vehemently denied these allegations, attempting to assuage the concerns surrounding their collaboration. It is worth noting that Dr. Howis had already capitalized on his image with a line of Stetson hats, meticulously replicating those worn by Harrison Ford in the iconic Indiana Jones films. In a shocking front-page article on July 12, 2011, the New York Times reported that Dr. Howis received an annual honorarium of up to $200,000 from National Geographic as an explorer in residence. This revelation raised concerns about the institution's reputation and triggered an investigation into National Geographic's ties with a former Egyptian official who controlled Egypt's prized antiquities. The issue revolved around potential violations of U.S. laws regarding payments to foreign government officials. The story unfolded against the backdrop of contracts initiated in 2001 between National Geographic and Dr. Zahi Hawass, who held a significant role as the Egyptian government's gatekeeper to ancient Egypt. He granted National Geographic access to iconic sites and artifacts, contributing to the organization's growth. However, the fees paid to Dr. Howis, ranging from $80,000 to $200,000 per year, raised legal concerns and were viewed as possible bribes. Dr. Howis vehemently denied any wrongdoing, saying, No one can bribe me. I'm the most famous Egyptologist. 
These revelations cast a shadow over Dr. Howis's reputation and raise questions about the delicate balance between knowledge pursuit, financial interests, and cultural heritage preservation in academia. Furthermore, the Times unveiled yet another layer of intrigue surrounding Dr. Zahi Howis's connections to American companies conducting business in Egypt. The publication disclosed that he maintained relationships with two such entities, fueling speculations about potential conflicts of interest and the intertwining of personal and professional pursuits. The plot thickened on April 17, 2011, as Dr. Howis found himself entangled in a legal battle that would leave a mark on his reputation. He received a one-year jail sentence for his refusal to comply with a court ruling concerning a contract for the gift shop at the Egyptian Museum, a contract that bore links to his own connections. However, this sentence was soon suspended pending appeal. The following day, the National Council of Egypt's administrative court issued a decree overturning the initial ruling, effectively sparing Dr. Howis from serving any jail time. He would continue to hold his position as Minister of Antiquities while a new contract was sought for the management of the museum's gift shop. Yet another peculiar incident emerged in April of 2013. Three Germans, described as amateur archaeologists, ventured into the inner sanctum of the Great Pyramid at Giza. Dominique Gorlitz, Stefan Erdmann, and Peter Hofer, driven by their own theories and conspiracy beliefs, sought to challenge the prevailing notion that the pyramid served as the final resting place of Pharaoh Khufu. In their quest for evidence, they scraped off a portion of the pyramid's cartouche, the symbol denoting the pharaoh for whom the monument was erected, and absconded with the fragment back to Germany for testing. When the news of the theft reached the public, outrage echoed worldwide. Dr. Howes swiftly denied any involvement with aiding these amateur adventurers, staunchly distancing himself from their actions. In a phone call brimming with anger, he asserted, I was not in charge in 2013. This theft happened in April of 2013. There is nothing against me. I just have to go to the district attorney to prove that what happened in 2010 was according to the law. The stolen samples, following international outcry, were eventually returned and the three men, along with five Egyptian officials, accused of facilitating their illicit access to the pyramid, were put on trial in absentia. And so, we reach the end of this mesmerizing tale where triumph and controversy intertwine, blurring the lines of ambition and ego. Dr. Zahi Hawass, the eminent contemporary Egyptologist, stands as a figure of both admiration and critique. Join us next time as we delve deeper into the fascinating world of archaeology, unearthing hidden stories beneath the sands of time. Remember, history's allure calls us to explore, question, and unravel the mysteries within. Subscribe, like, and hit the notification bell to join us on our exhilarating journeys. Stay curious, dear viewers, as your own epic adventure awaits.